At the beginning of the year, I had this idea. I'd focus on good news. This is why I basically haven't talked about climate change. Now I'm starting to think that not talking about it makes me part of the problem. The truth is that when I look at what's going on, I do get the feeling that by now it's just pointless to try and do anything about it. There is no way we'll get a grip on this other than by geoengineering, blocking the light from the sun. And since no one wants to say it, well, so I have to say it. The problem is that our own efforts of ruining the planet are getting amplified now by natural sources. Theoretically, we've known that this had happened, but now it's real. The Arctic tundra has become an emitter of carbon. This is because it's slowly unfreezing. The Amazon is now an emitter of carbon. This is because we're cutting it down. Peatlands are about to get there, and flooded wetlands are emitting methane, which is also a green house gas. Even the UN now admits that the Paris goal of limiting warming to 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels is dead, something that anyone with half a brain has long known. Personally, I think it was dead upon arrival, but here we got a lot of paperwork out of it. The temporary blip of enthusiasm about carbon capture has basically died off, after I think everyone realized that it's an idiotic idea. To make it have any appreciable impact, we'd basically have to spend the entire global GDP on nothing but carbon capture. It was obviously not going to happen. I still think that carbon capture and storage at fossil fuel plants makes sense, but this is heavily opposed by climate activists who don't like fossil fuel even if it doesn't emit carbon dioxide. Nonsense like this is part of the reason no one's paying attention to climate activists anymore. And I guess that's the thing that's so frustrating about this, that it's all so obvious. We were obviously never going to do anything anything about this until it's way too late. I mean, we don't have free will after all. And it's been too late for at least a decade now. Just look at all those climate activists who have been saying, now or never for years. Now or never has a surprising number of sequels. But well, since it didn't happen then, then I guess it never will. Yes, I know this is supposed to be science news, but what really is new? There have been all these new studies about everything that's going wrong on our planet, and I didn't even mention half of it. But this isn't new. It's always the same thing. We've gotten used to it. It's boring. If you make a YouTube video about it, that'll go glop, glop, glop to the bottom of the algorithm. And so we don't talk about it. And that we don't talk about it has become part of the problem. Another part of the problem is all the enthusiasm about artificial intelligence that I'm afraid I'm also contributing to because, yes, AI is a super exciting new technology and it could solve a lot of our problems. But will it? The United States, like no other country, has basically thrown out their climate plans to build more data centers because they think it's where the future is. Maybe they're right. And the Europeans are getting scared that they're missing the boat. What with America and China investing so heavily into AI and the European economy not looking good. So climate goals are likely to erode over here as well. What all this means is that we'll let the situation get worse until everyone's panicking and then we'll spray stuff into the atmosphere to get temperatures down. Of course, I'm not the only one who sees the writing on the wall. It's just that other people have enough brains to keep their mouth shut so that climate activists don't shit all over them. Or at least that used to be the case. In a stunning survey of 800 climate scientists that was recently conducted by new scientists, it turns out that two-thirds of them expect that we'll do geoengineering in this century, and another 25% aren't sure. 30 
95% are strongly against it, but 20% agree that we should do it. Daniele Visioni from Cornell University, New York, says that geoengineering has moved from a few academics vaguely talking about this to a global issue. And Sean Fitzgerald from the University of Cambridge says aptly, what are our real options? We might not like them, but it's a case of not liking those and not liking the current trajectory that we're on. That's a pretty good summary. Geoengineering is a terrible idea. But I don't think that'll stop us. And what's the alternative? I really want to know what you think where this will go. Let me know in the comments. And keep on dusting the solar panels. I used to get a lot of scam calls. And then I found out that this happened because my phone number had leaked from some websites I must have signed up to. I now have a new phone number and I'm signed up to Incogni to prevent that from happening again. You see, each time you open a website, it'll try to collect data about who you are and where you are and what other websites you've visited. If you then sign up for a website and fill in your personal details, they can and often do make money by selling your private information to data brokers. Most countries have laws against that and you can ask for your data to be removed but doing this takes up a lot of time. Incogni automates the process of getting you out of those databases. You sign up and they'll contact the big sinners, request that your personal details be removed, and they'll keep on doing that. And if you want, send you updates about the progress they're making. I'm glad there's now a simple solution to stop unfriendly people doing nasty things with my personal details. Incogni is super easy to use. You sign up, give them the information they should look for, and they go to work, like, within a minute, basically. It's really solved a problem for me, and maybe it'll help you too. If you use my code Zabina or the custom link in the info below, you'll get 60% off of Incogni. That's an amazing deal. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.